Hello everybody, welcome to another uh, episode of uh, Bigfoot Tales. Um, a bit of a problem with my hike that I planned out for the day and that uh, the flooding is uh, too great and I wasn't able to get in here through uh, my normal means so I had to go quite a bit out of the way uh, but in that um, we're actually going to be going through a uh, piece which, of land which I have uh, never actually put on uh, film yet. Well, I have, but I haven't shown it. Uh, so you're all going to see something special today. Something that uh, I've never shared with anybody. Um, it should be an interesting day, and we'll see what we can find. And as you can see, there's uh, a lot of snow here in the woods. Here it is in late in mid, early April. Well, mid-April, actually. It's after tax day now. But it uh, doesn't look like the last few uh, years at all. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll carry on, see what we can find. And uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, good evidence to share today. But uh, here we go. And uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in to uh, another episode of Bigfoot Tales. It's a pretty, uh, pretty windy spring. a lot of things like that over in there. It caused by uh, you know dead and rotten trees just simply falling over in the wind. Yeah like that there is uh, pretty stupendous looking the way it's split like that. I'll go over and take a closer look. Got plenty of time. It's uh, it's how rotten this stuff is. It's almost like there was uh, a. It's this definitely an oddity. You can see right in there. The bark is. It was a log laying there and it's gone. That, uh, that's not uh, something that's normal. There's an indentation. It's uh, probably about six and a half feet long uh, where there was a log. You can see the uh, the bark covered over the leaves, but the log is gone. This looks like the uh, kind of a trailish. Here are all the frogs. They're probably complaining about the snow too. This is an uh, interesting tree bend here. That sort of bend though is uh, generally caused snow load 
weakness of the tree. Well, I was worried about the flooding. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'll show you some water. Um, and where that water is is where I was filming yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, but uh, over the weekend. Uh, through, uh, uh, I put on my last uh, video of the first Bigfoot hunt of the spring of 2014. Um, it's not all underwater, so whatever was there for sign, it's gone now. I'm going to turn this camera around and show you, and I'll head down that way, so, pretty awesome flooding. All of this was where I was walking yesterday. And way down over there is where the trail is.
of that over there where they have the two uh, trees that are leaning against each other. Uh, that is uh, pretty interesting. It's consistent with uh, some other uh, sites that I have seen in the past. Yeah. Whoops. Let's see if I can zoom in on that here. The sun is really wrecking havoc on my uh, ability to view the screen here. So, see how they're leaning at opposite angles. That is something that is consistent with some other spaces or sites, rather, that I've come across um, in other uh, settings. Uh, far removed by many many miles uh, from here uh, but we'll uh, take a walk around there and uh, take a closer look at it these are lot would have been easy for them to fall naturally, but would they fall naturally like this at the same time? Such a short amount of time. It was right over just beyond that little spruce tree there where I uh, did my the last video that I shot and uh, right over in there on the other side is where I came back down and I shot part of it and uh, I was actually uh, shooting over in this area towards this direction and I heard some noise but I didn't pick anything up so maybe there was something here but I'm gonna put up the camera
pretty interesting and I call it. So. This is uh, this is a trail you've probably seen in some of my videos. A uh, me going down a steep hill to a tiny brook that's like three feet wide at the most. Uh, but right now, that's a bigger body of water, and the leaves are flowing backwards so the river itself is actually rising even as we speak what I'm gonna do is uh see if I can line up to those two trees where see if there's any possible other sign. Those are over that way. And it looks like a trail down there. The trail up to this way. I'm going to come back to this. But I'm going to go down here first see if I can get a different uh, angle of view on those two trees. the base of them right in there. I'm going to turn my camera off for a minute while I take some pictures. Right in a straight line with a teepee. There's that element of the teepee right there. I've long said, oops, I said this one's wrecking havoc on the screen here. Can't really see what I'm pointing at. See at the angle one? That's the element of that teepee that's way down there that I thought was a marker. You can do a 180 turn right through 
there is the other one at the same angle. You can see the other two pieces there sticking right up. And it's right on that path. So I'm going to pause it. That whatever it is for Solomon, he's trying to find actually does use stick signs or tree signs or whatever you want to call it to mark out roots. Of course I can't go over there. Took me a lot of time to get around the water. But, um, Okay, I have this on maximum zone. You can see that one piece right in the center that's uh, sticking up. Right in that angle there, it's kind of whitish. I think it's an alder. Um, that is one element of that teepee that I examined last year that I uh, uh, considered to be some sort of a marker. You can see the beginnings of that, the number two. Um, the number three is not really visible, that tree is in the way. But there's one right there. That's, a, that's one triangular or TP shaped um, structure that is at, they have angles uh, combining of uh, 45 and 60 uh, degrees in the way that they're set up, almost kind of like an isosceles. Okay, now, to turn this tripod around 180 degrees. Uh, I'm right on the edge of the bank, so I've got to be careful. That's the uh, the new one. Well, it, it's not you know made yesterday new, but it's new since uh, the last time I was in this area. And if you follow right down along and through there, whoops, you see a tree bend. that tree bend is high enough uh, where uh, you can actually walk underneath it but it's right in line with that B which is right in line again with that other whoop. structure which is through the woods there at any rate um, it's uh, 
That's what I've been investigating for the last three years is uh, the stick structure issue, um, as well as the folklore. Folklore's a lot of fun, but um, and, and again, I've developed this theory that uh, certain markers are made um, to indicate pathways through safe areas. Um, we can't go through part of this, of course, like I'd like to, because the, uh, the river is flooding over, and there's a lot of area down here that I can't walk across um, to show you the entire path. So I'm going to have to try and come back uh, probably about a month. It should be uh, safe enough and dry enough to, to come through, but we'll come back then. But uh, all these elements together combined, um, you know, a lot of people say it's perfectly natural that can happen. Um, and yes, they can be, but um, yeah, I think it's way too coincidental that this many um, items, um, you know, of, of supposedly natural nature uh, to happen in such a fashion and in such a almost, um, you know, uh, intelligent design, if you want to use that term, uh, to make some sort of a straight roadway. Um, that will bypass uh, a bunch of uh, dangerous places. Uh, for instance, here, uh, where I'm standing right in the middle of this trail, um, it crosses a couple of park trails. Um, it comes from outside of the park, goes through the park to the other side of the park. Both of those two sides are private property. Um, so the public doesn't go there. They're not supposed to, but I have. <laughs> But uh, if uh, you were to look, and we'll turn the camera around, and this is right on the pathway, but if you look right over there, that's a ridge. If they were to go along that ridge, walk that way, which is a lot easier, it's, it's actually a developed path. Um, there's a, a place there where, uh, for several yards, um, they're actually going to be exposed to traffic on a highway. Which is on, there's a pond on the other side of that ridge. And uh, they could be easily seen. But over here, um, you know, they can uh, walk to their heart's content. And uh, we'll not see anything, not be seen. So, uh, that's where my, uh, my opinion lies right now. That's where my theory lies, is that uh, there are certain specific types of structures that are used um, in developing these routes through uh, populated areas, or semi-populated areas, I guess would be a better term. Uh, you know, there's houses out on the highway, but there's nothing at all back here. Um, so, um, you know, we'll go from there and we'll see what we can find, but... Uh, that's my theory anyways, and we'll go with it for that. And uh, I'll uh, keep the camera on for a few more minutes there, and I'm going to uh, start to head back towards the, uh, the highway and uh, see if I can catch a ride back into town.